It's the one and only original GC3, and I'm in the place to be, lovely Phoenix, Arizona, coming at you with episode number 35. That's right, number 35 here on the Vision Sports Network. I hope you guys are all excited. I mean, we're getting ready for a live period, but more importantly, you know, we're going to have a huge opportunity at Chandler Gilbert Community College on April 27th. And I have a special guest who I'm going to bring on here shortly, who's going to be the guest speaker, keynote speaker to the for the parent seminar as well as the student athlete seminar. So without further ado, here is my special guest. Mr. Rivers, how you doing, sir? What's going on, George, man? You better call me Rivers or Chris, man. You keep making me sound like my dad. How you doing today? Oh, I'm great. You know, I'm in the place to be, you know, just trying to stay relevant, you know, in this basketball game. Like I said, there's hey. so much going on. Live period weekend coming up, you know, and then, uh, yeah, we have this big event, uh, which is the GC3 Hoops Fab 100, which takes place next week, April 27th at Chandler Gilbert Community College. I'm excited to be a part of it. Looking, I always like coming down to Phoenix anyway, but to come down and support your event and the platform you're creating, given these young ladies and opportunities to not only compete against each other, to develop some, to develop some skills, obviously get some exposure and ideally um, build some new friendships and relationships that can carry them throughout their sports journeys. Absolutely. Again, you know, I really appreciate you um, committing to be, you know, my keynote speaker and I'm excited as this event is going to, is going to grow. Uh, especially let's talk about why this, a, an event like this is critical especially with, you know, the portal, you know, the portal, it, it's starting to impact the women's side. I mean, it, it's been impacting the men's side for the last couple of years, but it makes it a lot more difficult for high school students to get recruited. So events like this, if they're not talking to in contact with any division ones or division twos, you know, we're going to have 12 to 13 NAIA and JUCOs here in the building, you know, so, I agree, George. Uh, the transfer portal is definitely here to here to stay, regardless what side of the business you're on. I'm on a couple of different sides of it, but I think it's it's time now for parents to start having different conversations with their kids when they're eighth graders and ninth graders and tenth graders. Just saying D1 or bust might not be the best approach to take, and maybe trying to open up their eyes to some other levels of at least starting off their freshman year knowing that you can always transfer up. Not that their kids aren't talented enough, not that they aren't, you know, ready to play, but just the landscape has changed where the amount of seniors coming out of high school that are going to have the opportunity to earn scholarships and play at the, the division one level straight out of the, the gate is definitely becoming more and more limited as we've seen the past two years. Absolutely. And like I got off the phone with a, you know, a couple of division twos that they called me on the way home. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, they're out and about on the recruiting trail. But, you know, we were talking and they just said, George, like, we're looking at this portal as a great opportunity for us to snag some potentially low major plus mid major kids that, you know, that are not even being looked at because of just the landscape. And, and people, you know, maybe you can kind of explain a little bit better than I can, especially on your side. Um, and what you, ex you know, with your expertise and experience, um, you know, what what does this really mean for for these kids? And, you know, um, like college coaches looking to just recruit out of the portal or, try well, one, trying to recruit their rosters back because, you know, a lot of different scenarios bump the kids in the portal, like either not enough playing time or not enough NIL money or you know receiving advice that you know it'd be good to go to the portal to see what happens or the fourth one is sometimes some of our young people aren't as competitive as they used to be and are looking for opportunities to find the least path of resistance to get on the court i think any reason is valid it's definitely not my responsibility to tell any family what to do um, i work at excel sports management I'm on the NIL recruiting side for basketball. So I'm working with multiple families who are current clients. And obviously I'm trying to recruit new families and athletes that we can service through their career journey and hopefully to the NBA. 
But as I think you alluded to, as we're seeing, I don't coach college. I've never coached college, but we all have multiple relationships in the college space. And what we are continually hearing from these men and women who work in that space is that for their job security and for their professional careers, that they need to recruit players that they feel good about are going to have a chance to come and step in and play immediately. And players who have proven experience, excuse me, have proven experience at any level of college have better resumes than the majority of high school players coming in. There's obviously a certain elite level that we see the top 100, top 120 that are going to always be in demand because they're super talented and they've proven that they are a little bit above everyone else. But for the majority of the kids who typically would have been recruited by some of the smaller D1 schools and are now not are now not even being looked at. And I think that phrase you said that most of the college coaches I talk to, and you've heard it too, they have to re-recruit their own players or they choose not to re-recruit their own players in order to send a message that, hey, we don't want you here so that they can go into the portal and try to get a player with a different caliber. So there's a lot of different moving pieces in this transfer portal space that there's a lot of good information out there. I think it's um, our responsibilities as champions of this game, people who love this industry to give out as much truth as we can so that families can digest it, knowing we don't have a dog in the fight. I'm not trying to collect any collective payoffs off anyone. Uh, my kids are through with college, but I think that anytime we get a chance to share some good insights from a family that wants to listen, learn as much as they can, and then decide what they want to do on their journey with their, with their child is something that we're here to do. No, absolutely. And, and again, I appreciate your, your, your input. And, um, you know, again, I know I, I still, the following on this podcast is, is growing and, you know, I get feedback from, from one of the dads mm -hmm. and uh, he, he calls him and he's like, George, like this podcast is so informative and, you know, you're bringing on people from different sides of, of, of the industry and, you know, some of the, the topics and discussions. And I told him, Hey, I'm still learning this whole podcast thing. You know, I learn something new every day, but I said, it's, um, you know, one thing that I am trying to do better is to do more than the casual conversation. And, um, you know, that's one thing I think I need to stop, <laughs> just stop for a little bit and reorganize and rebuild it. But so far, so good. You know, the, the train's on the track. It's running. So I'm just kind of adding. Definitely running. You said this is day. episode 35, right? It's, de it's, it's doing, definitely it's doing 35. And, you know, I'm, I'm learning, you know, here and there. And it's funny because, um, like, even my sister, she, she she chimes in and will watch. And she's like, can you take a picture of your podcast studio? Like, it looks so professional. And I take a picture, and then she calls me back laughing. She's like, you're so creative. Like, you make everything look super amazing when it's really just a small spot in your home office and i said hey i'm i'm on a teacher's salary i'm trying my best and she's like no it looks amazing but it is a studio and then you know when i invite guests i'm like yeah we're gonna go to the studio and they're like is it a physical studio i said no it's a it's here on the internet you know it's a it's a digital studio and you know i i have the control over you know different things and you know one of the coolest things about this platform which I did was um, I did a listening party. So I provided color commentary play by play for the state championship games. I couldn't rebroadcast the state championship games, but I ordered the pay-per-view and, and I just watched a video and called my own, you know, color commentary and play by play. And those are for people, especially with the smaller schools that are way mm -hmm. out on like the reservation, you know, out in the middle of nowhere but they do have a little bit of internet signal and they know how to get on my YouTube channel. So I did that. And, and I remember the one game I had like, like over 3000 views, like on, on that, on that uh, live casting. And we did it on this, yeah, you know, well, I had George, my, uh, the Arizona basketball community and greater, even outside of Arizona, they're looking to you to be a leader in the space. They know that you're going to deliver truth. You're, you're going to bring on guests that have um, insights and opinions that can help them better help themselves as, as athletes or coaches. And people know that, you know, your only objective is to be someone in the game who is respected and truthful and have a good time. No, absolutely. And uh, again, you know, I really want to thank you for joining us today. I mean, that's, that's clear cut everybody. I mean, we still have space available 
for the Fab 100, again, um, there's more information on my Instagram, my website. Uh, you guys can please follow me. You know, my what Instagram are the grades handle right here. What are, the, what are the grades of the young ladies that can participate? So the grades of the young ladies that can participate are 7th grade through 12th grade. Okay. So that's for the 24-25 school year. Well, actually this school year. Yeah, so 7th through 12th grade. Um, you know, I even have – I got a – majority of the kids are traveling in uh, from outside of the Phoenix area. Uh, the vast majority are coming from Tucson. I have some from coming from the north part of Arizona. Uh, I even got a – I even got a kid flying out from Hawaii. She's coming from Kauai, the neighbor island, to come to this event. And, um, you know, I, I was able to speak to her family. And, you know, they, they're they just real, you want to, you know, give their daughter any type of opportunity. Um, you know, especially, I you know, they said, wow, that's a lot of schools. And, you know, we're realistic. You know, we don't think our daughter will be a, you know, a, a high major, you know, division one athlete i said well you never know and it's it's good to you know come out and see you know see play against different kids you know besides that she'll get a lot out of the skills and drills you know the family and, and herself will get a lot from from you the guest speaker give a lot of valuable information and um you know to kind of help them understand the recruiting process even better and you know that's the goal you know, speaking of the recruiting process, you referenced that there's a dozen plus schools that'll be in attendance. Can you share some of those that have verbally committed to attend right now? Yeah. So as of right now, I got Cochise College from Douglas, Arizona. I got Arizona Western. I got Eastern Arizona. I got all the Phoenix areas such as Glendale, Phoenix, Chandler Gilbert, Mesa Community College, um, even some of the smaller four year schools like Ottawa University. Uh, Park University, uh, another one's Yavapai College, um, and then I have a school coming from uh, from New Mexico, Navajo uh, Technical University um, is going to send their an assistant to just be there to evaluate the student athletes. Um, Justice College, one of the newer schools here in Arizona, they're a small Christian college mm -hmm. transitioning to uh, to an NAIA. So um, here it in sounds like there's a lot of opportunities for players from multiple ages, it sounds like, since you're going down to seventh grade to get noticed, get identified, maybe reaffirm their status, get introduced to some different levels. And I think that's great for the parents and the young athletes that will be able to participate. And I think it's one of our responsibilities is just to educate families that the division two level for those who don't have experience in it and the JUCO that there's intense competition in all these levels of basketball. Obviously the division one level is the aspiration for many, but sometimes I think people just don't understand how competitive it is at the other levels and that how much work goes into it just to get on the floor is more than they realize if they haven't already been through it or had a child play at that level. No, and I agree. I remember this happened to me, what, I want to say about two years ago where I had a, a family I knew and, you know, their, the dad was like, oh, my son should just play junior college ball. That'd be good for him. And I said, well, let's put it this way. Let, let's go to a junior college game. And sure, we did. And they were stunned at the level it was at. I said, to be honest, the Arizona Community College Athletic Conference is getting stronger. On the women's side, it always has been really strong. There's right. a lot of mid-major talent that comes out of that conference as far as the top-tier kids. And even the, the other kids that are getting out, they're still you know, low-major you know, D2 type prospects and, and they're really good. And, you know, I, I urge a lot of the people like, Hey, if you have a chance to go catch a Juco game locally, do it. It's, it's going to be the best $5 you spend to get in is it's really a really good level. And those kids just don't have a lot of fans some of the time to, to play in front of, but just to go and attend to see that level. And because ultimately this is, you know, with the portal and, and, and the way it's going, Junior college might be the only way for a lot of the kids to get to a bigger four-year school, D2 or D1. Yeah, and we all have different paths on this basketball journey. Uh, my son was able to play one year of JUCO coming straight out of high school right before COVID hit, and he had a really quality experience, and I was one of those dads who thought I understood every level of basketball, but until I got there, 
got to watch him play 20 to 24 games. And um, we live outside of Portland, Oregon. So we play teams from throughout Washington and up and down the state of Oregon. How many young men at that point were just committed to pursuing their basketball dreams and we're getting after them. We're working hard and we're physical and the coaching was high level. So I would encourage families to hopefully have someone in their circle. I like to use the term truth teller who can hopefully give you good feedback on where your kid is right now. As you said, not saying where a kid can't get to, but just having realistic expectations, no different than, you know, that if you're a student looking to go to college just for academics and you're not a 4.0 above, your chances of getting into an Ivy League school is going to be slightly difficult. So you got to have realistic goals where you're pursuing for college as a student, as you should as an athlete as well. But getting people who can help who can help provide you with feedback if basketball is not something in your family that you have a lot of experience in. No, I, I agree. And I really appreciate you sharing, you know, your family's journey, you know, with, with your son, because uh, again, you know, these experiences are, are valuable. Um, it turns into wisdom and knowledge. So just being able to help out, educate the next, the next generation coming up. Yeah. And as a parent, just to watch my kid run around for one more season, was the best. And it's something I, you know, got to see all the success at the high school level, decent mid-level AAU experience, but to watch your kid play at a college level and make a few baskets, throw it to the right team more than he turned it over, which is a good thing for a point guard. But, uh, and now that he's graduating in June to think five years ago, it's amazing how fast that time has gone. So I'll be able to cherish those memories, but I understand how stressful it is for families right now who are investing so much time in supporting their, their kids, whether you're the family that's driving them to training every morning at six. So they got the trainer after school or they're playing on a competitive AU team and you're going to three days of a tournament and you're paying for parking. You're paying 15 to 20 dollars per person through admission. And then you're like, gosh, this is exhausting. We're investing so much money. You just want to see a return on it. And I understand that, but I think that the sooner that we can kind of open up our eyes and our visions as families and see that there may be more opportunities than just those traditional paths, that we'll see that we can kind of fit into one of those, um, to fit into one of those paths a little bit easier than we may have thought when we didn't, when, when we weren't informed on all those opportunities. No, absolutely. And and that's what this Fab 100 is all about. You know, we're, we're hitting a home run with it. And again, um, it's going to be, Saturday, April 27th at uh, Chandler Gilbert Community College. And uh, I'm going to be kind of finalizing that schedule on the Monday to release Monday uh, as far as the rosters and, and also the actual schedule. So, um, George, again, how do families sign up? Families can sign up by the best, easiest way just to DM me um, because registration closes on Monday. Um, DM me at Instagram.com backslash at GC three hoops. And then I will forward you over a registration link. If you have the GC three hoops app, which is on your Apple or your, uh, your Apple iPhone or your, your Android, just look me up in the, uh, GC three hoops on, on the play store. And, uh, you're able to get, get to the, uh, get to the registration link off of my app. Great. Well, I'm looking forward to flying in town. And I'm definitely looking forward to going to one of my favorite restaurants. So I'm not going to say what it is since they're not a sponsor of the show, but I'm definitely looking forward to it once I, once I get there. Absolutely. And we'll catch up. Like I said, I, cause uh, my Fridays begin today, you know, my regular job, I'm off Thursday nights, my Friday night. So super grateful for my new job that I got. I started there in January and um, right. it's just been great. Cause there's a lot of, you know, work life balance, which is critical. I know my, my children enjoy it being able to um, for me to sometimes just pick them up on a Friday, just, you know, I'll pull up to their school and they're just like, wow, you know, dad's here. <laughs> so Good. Well, it's definitely well, great. So again, on Chris, behalf of the basketball always, community, George, uh, we thank you for just being consistent with this podcast. Um, I'm honored to be on number 35. I know I might've been on one of the first few when you were just getting started and you definitely elevated the graphics. I'm not sure if you can make me look any more handsome than I usually am, but you can work on that in the editing process. But uh, no, you are a true champion for the greater Arizona basketball community. And you give voices to those who often don't have them. And I know that you're going to change some, change some lives by all of your contributions to the game of basketball. So thank you. 
No, thank you again. I appreciate all your support. But um, anyways, Chris, I'm going to put you backstage, and uh, we got some announcements. So, again, appreciate it. Peace out, Mr. Rivers. And, guys, just a few announcements. My first announcement is the spring issue of the GC3 Hoops magazine. This is volume one, issue number five, featuring the Tucson Swarm, Southern Arizona's one of their premier, it's Southern Arizona's premier program. They're loaded high school, middle school, and episode, or um, excuse me, the article is up right now, gc3hoops.com. And then we also got a breaking news announcement. And the huge announcement that was coming from the East Valley this morning is Gilbert High School hired former Post and Butte women's head coach Savannah Bix as their new head coach. So Coach Savannah Bix has built a powerhouse there in Pinal County at Post and Butte, had a lot of success there, set a lot of program records in its short history. She now takes over the Gilbert High program that was last led by Colton Walker, who turned that program back into a competitor. So the great thing is uh, Coach Bix is going to be my guest for tomorrow. So, again, I want to thank you all for all your love and support. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and, and subscribe. Go to YouTube.com backslash at Vision Sports Network. And uh, – that's where the show, and that's all, folks. I appreciate you guys, and have a great evening.